All right. Um, I just realized that I forgot to hit record. So we're already 45 minutes into the class. And uh, so I'm going to kind of briefly provide an overview of what uh, what was said, what I discussed, uh, because it's really important uh, when we're thinking about our e-portfolios to have an understanding of Creative Commons license and have some ideas about design when it comes to your own e-portfolio, which is basically what we talked about this morning, which I just spent almost 45 minutes talking about uh, before realizing again that I had not hit record. So here we go. Um, what we talked about this morning, first Creative Commons license and the, uh, the main thing to really realize here when you're sharing content in your online space is this idea of Creative Commons license. So this basically means that you can include content in your e-portfolios that you find online that comes from an outside source. You can use that without getting permission as long as you pay attribution. That is, you give credit back to the person, basically saying that this information, this content is not your own. Mainly, what this will include is a link back to where uh, the, your audience, the person can find the original source. So if you find an image, you find an audio, a video that comes from an outside source, make sure that you link back to that source in your public e-portfolio. And I would also include the name of the person and also the type of license that it's under, CC BY, CC BY NC, uh, and so on. And if you have questions about the different types of Creative Commons, Creative Commons licenses, we can discuss that. But that's if you're finding information online that you want to use in your own, uh, your own e-portfolio. Now, if you're creating information or content for your own e-portfolio, for example, creating an image, you take a picture that you want to include, you create an audio, a video, even if it's in uh, part of uh, your class work, then you are creative, creating content. And when you publish it, you can also make a decision. Do you want to license it under a Creative Commons license or not? If you don't indicate anything and you just upload something that, that is your own, by default, it's going to be assumed it's under an all rights reserved, which technically means no one else will be able to use that in their own in their own uh, space. That's not to say it won't happen, but um, you know, legally, technically, they're not supposed to do that. I would suggest, and I'm a promoter of Creative Commons license, so everything that I promote, everything that I create online, is under a Creative Commons license, and I encourage everyone else to do the same. Simply. Because I think having Creative Commons uh, resources or, or open educational resources in, is going to be very helpful in really promoting a quality of knowledge and information to others. So, um, but that's up to you. The main thing to be concerned about is if you're finding content online that you're legally being you're you're legally using it or sharing it or distributing it in your own e-portfolio in a, in a legal way. So again, make sure that you are choosing Creative Commons license resources when you're using it to, um, to populate your e-portfolio. We also talked about today in class a website called Creative, Creative Commons Search. And so we use the example here, and I've included links in our Notion page for this course. You can find links to everything that we're talking about here. But we talked about, we showed an example of searching for trees under a Creative Commons license and, uh, and know that these are, are uh, these are, these will, uh, these images you're, you can use. So, You'll notice in the corner there are different types of Creative Commons license, and uh, I didn't want to really get into the weeds this morning about all the different types, but the the most open is this first one here, CC BY, and uh, this allows others to use this content or allows you to use other people's content um, as long as you pay attribution. There are some other variations, CC BY SA, this is a share alike, which means that if you are 
using content from another source and it's under a specific license that you must respect the same license. You can't change the license. A CC BY means someone else can actually change the license. They have that freedom. NC means non-commercial, so that means uh, users of that content uh, will not be able to make money. ND means you can't change or modify. There, should, there are no derivatives of the content, so you can't change or modify the, the, the content. So if you create a video, for example, they can use it, but they can't change it. Okay, so uh, if you have specific questions about these types of um, Creative Commons license, we can talk about that on an individual basis. But I wanted to show you here an easy way to, to do that. We also talked about DuckDuckGo, which is my favorite search engine, and using bangs and using the bang exclamation mark CC for Creative Commons space. And then in this case, I'm going to search for trees. And this takes you simply directly to the Creative Commons search page and searches whatever key term that you include. So it's a more of a direct link into finding uh, and filtering through the online sources online to find the Creative Commons uh, licensed work. Now here we have, um, actually in Google, you can do the same thing in Google. There's a way to filter. I'm not going to go into it now. I, I find this a lot easier to try to find the content that we're uh, that you need. But uh, Google, if you if you just do a regular search in Google, you're likely not to find Creative Commons images. So I would avoid using just a regular Google search unless you find the way to really filter through. Uh, and do a filtered search for specifically uh, Creative Commons license work. All right, so we talked about that this morning. Um, afterwards, we talked about your ePortfolios. And I shared with you basically three ways that you can share your documents, your audios, your videos. In Microsoft 365, you have a way of sharing your screen or sharing documents, I should say. And I... Let me go ahead and open up here the example that I provided. So this is my OneDrive in Office 365. And let's say I want to share this document, Academic Writing Template. If I click here, right, I can click Share. And I have an option of sharing with anyone with this link, which means anyone even outside the organization is able to access this document. You may or may not have this option. If you do not have this option, and only have these options down below, then you will not be able to share documents within your, 360, your Office 365 account publicly. So that won't be an option for you. But Microsoft, I'm sorry, Google Drive, if you're using Google and Google Drive and you're uploading documents there, you, there is a way that you can share documents publicly and actually publish it as a website and make that available. And then bring that into like either embed or link that document to um, to your ePortfolio. But you have to set it up first. You have to publish it and make it available first. And those are there are sev several steps involved there. If anyone has questions about how to do that, uh, let me know. The third way we talked about is opening up an account in Scribd. And this page allows you to upload documents and share it publicly, right? There are other services here as well, but uh, what will help us, I think, is giving you an option here to upload documents and then being able to share the, your own documents publicly. Okay, so this is another option here, Scribd, S-C-R-I-B-D. So check this out if you, um, if you need to, if this is another, uh, if, you have an, if you need an alternative way of sharing documents, uh, in your ePortfolio. The last thing we talked about is thinking about how to organize our homepage, trying to not include any artifacts in the homepage, but instead have a, a series of maybe links or navigational bars here, or one navigational bar with different links that takes you to subpages within your ePortfolio where specific artifacts can be found. In this case, we shared uh, Carlos's ePortfolio, and 
We mentioned how he has his navigational bar here at the top right-hand corner of his screen. Under artifacts, he currently has grammar and writing. He might want to later change this title of artifacts to maybe English skills, where maybe subpages that relate to English skills might be located here as a, as a drop-down menu as he has it. So he could add a course, for example, listening and speaking and include artifacts that relate to listening and speaking. We also talked about maybe dividing those pages into, let's say, one for writing, one for speaking, and categorize or, um, yeah, order or organize all the artifacts within those two spaces, one for writing, one for speaking. And so maybe courses, uh, your reading course might have some products that relate more to writing. Maybe the reading course, some of the products that you did in that class might relate more to speaking. That would be another option. But the key point here is to try to include artifacts that you've completed throughout the semester in all of your propic classes and organize those into certain subpages that can be found in your ePortfolio. Those subpages then should be able to uh, be located in a navigational bar that is easy to understand where the audience, someone coming and visiting for the first time your ePortfolio can easily find those artifacts and really try to avoid including artifacts in the main page. You might have a video that is your introduction, introducing yourself and introducing how your page is organized. And I would include that in the home page. You could have an image. You might have a greeting, of course, your name. You might even have a picture of yourself in the main page. I think those are all good options, things to consider. But when you get into other additional artifacts that are specific to certain skills or certain subject matters, then my suggestion would be to try to include subpages and uh, really pay close attention to the navigational bar and choose a template that has a good navigational bar that you're comfortable with using and setting up for your ePortfolio. But guys, this is basically what we talked about today and um, basically summed up 45 minutes of me rattling on with, without recording it uh, into about 12 and a half minutes here. So I hope this helps. I at least wanted to provide a short summary of what I talked about so that you could go back to uh, the recording and uh, check it out if you need additional uh, clarification or if perhaps maybe you missed uh, today's class, you have that option to go back and listen. Um, but uh, make sure that you're checking with me if you want me to look at your ePortfolio or if you have specific technical questions about how to move content around and uh, design your ePortfolio in a way that's organized and logical. Uh, that's really the key. Um, and uh, so make sure that you're reaching out. Make sure that you're spending time each day that I'm giving you in class to work on your ePortfolio to join your group sessions, making sure that you're uh, having group discussions and recording those group discussions, brainstorming, sharing ideas, suggesting and helping each other uh, address your ePortfolio design, and, um, and then ultimately completing this task individually.